viewers I'll score this today. I got another um, big load of cassettes, a nice bag full, and I got this chucked in. Here's an old uh, Tempest, it's one of those mono tape recorders. I quite love these things. It is old enough to have the call signs on the AM bed, which is kind of cool. Model GX5000 made in Hong Kong. Hong Kong was pretty much a home of cheap stuff back then. But this thing has an input, which I could use for a Bluetooth input, which is kind of cool. And then a tape input, and a remote, and a microphone input. I don't know just for an, um, a Mac adapter to go enough for a Bluetooth receiver, and I can record off Spotify. <laughs> That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Recording in mono off things like Spotify and other, other sources. <laughs> yeah, that switch is a bit loose. Might have to try and fix that one. I'm going to clean these pots, clean those switches. Let's get this thing apart. I get the cassette player doesn't work in these belts. The audio works good, but the uh, tape player has got no motion, so yeah, the belts have failed. Let's get this thing apart so we can give it a, give it a good blow at before. It was pretty dirty in there. The area wasn't good, Nick, too. Pretty cool. For something made in Hong Kong at the time, this is quality stuff. Wow. There's that switch is broken there. Has it actually been bypassed or has that someone's actually been in here and fixed it? Oh, that switch is broken and someone's bypassed it. Oh well, I've got a spare somewhere in my stash I can fix that. Look at the quality of this mechanism. Big flywheel. This is a quality tape player mechanism. That belt is rooted. Nice motor. That's quality. Oh, the joys of fixing old electronics, eh? <laughs> we have a rust of the bugger with screw there. Would not undo, so that whole post there span on the rivet. The whole thing spun. I was thinking about putting semi glue on it and trying again, but um, upon closer inspection now, that's rusted so bad it's not, that's not going to come apart, that screw. That won't ever come out. Wow, that is stuck. So I was old to, uh, well, these came out second best. That didn't do much. I was wear safety glasses too. This was a lucky escape. Ting! And bounced off the bloody wall. Let it just there. Yeah, that didn't last long, did it? Taiwan made once for the win. These did it really well. Taiwanese quality. And these worked, the nip -X, but that didn't go deep enough. I damaged a circuit board trace a little bit, but there's a lot of meat in that, so... That's a pretty easy fix anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. I didn't damage it too much. I really didn't want to damage a board at all if I could, but... It was impossible. This screw was not going to come out, so cut it out. It's got plenty holding this circuit board there. One there and one there would be enough anyway. This one is just not needed anyway. So here's the belt. There's the old belt. It's all flimsy and uh, there's just no um, let's stretch to buggery. Look at that flywheel. Quality stuff. It's a quality mechanism. Quiet motor too. Let's replace this belt. I guess it'll be it's good to go. Then all I have to do is just clean up that record switch, clean those contacts, clean up the pen shroud and all the um, tape guide, and this will be fine. Good to go. Anyway, works quite well. I'll set this up and I'll plug it and give it a test. See how much torque's on this motor. Plug it in, press play. Oh, it's torque on that load wheel. I mean that fly wheel, I mean. I can tighten this screw back up there. It's not a spring. Yeah, there's a bit of torque on that now. Oh yeah, there's some torque on that. Perfect. Some cleanings involved. They gotta do some cleaning. Anyway, let's uh, get this thing clean up, and I can put a tape on it and give it a test. 
That belt's actually pretty good. It's a bit of torque on there. I'll put my fingers on the wheels inside to hold them. There's a good bit of torque on those now. I've also noticed here, I've got a 16 volt 470 microfarad, a Polo branded Japanese capacitor. Look at that. Just rusted their legs off, so I'm gonna have to replace that. Let's take it my cap stash. Alright, let's get my spare capacitors out and replace that capacitor there while I've got it apart. I replaced with a nice Jap cap, a Japanese Nichicon capacitor. The uh, same valley, just a 25 volt, 16 volt, higher voltage rate matter. As you can see, it's corroded the bug, but look at that. It's been leaking too. Ooh, pretty bad. Ray pass, it's used by that, that one. That was the only one of those I found. Alright, now let's uh, give it a test. I'm going to get my cleaning cassette and a Q-tip and some alcohol. I'm not putting the tape in this till I get it really clean. It's not good to play a good cassette, good or bad even if it is a bad cassette. You don't want to um, run a dirty mechanism because it can scratch the head and everything with dirt. And do irreversible damage. Okay, it's this way. It slides across. Tough, tough on that one. Nice switches. Oh, there's some torque now. That's better. Yeah, heaps of torque. It's a Mitsumi brand Japanese motor too. It's quality stuff. There's some torque on that. Works good. That's a reliable stop mechanism. You can see the flywheel still spinning. Look at that. Let's get, a, um, get that mechanism clean. I'll go put a cassette in there. We can play a tape. That's pretty cool, eh? <laughs> I really like that. I'm going to press record to the clean that erasing head. Always think of that when you're cleaning cassettes. This is an electronic erase head too. The head's down, but it's not a permanent magnet type erasing head, it's an electric one. These types of old cassette mechanisms are AC bias, which is good. AC bias is good for sound quality. I'll we'll have to clean it anyway. Oh, it's dirty. That is filthy. I have to give it a big polish with some um, alcohol and go over it with some um, silicon spray, dry lube, fix that. It's in, in one piece, though, which is a good thing. I can tape off the radio. As you can see, I got the monitor on, monitor off. I know I can talk to myself on the microphone. The microphone's working quite well there. Yeah, too close to the speaker. The microphone's too close to the speaker there. Monitor off. I don't know what I'm recording. Now, wait, to know what I'm recording, I'll have to plug something into the uh, headphone output and plug it into an amplifier to regulate the volume. You get a fixed volume with these older recorders. That's what monitors for. We'll be old school today. Mind smooth and smooth. On hit. Features 99.5. Working well. I've uh, cleaned up this mechanism as best I can. I've got a Q-tip over it, which is um, looking good now. Perfect. That's very clean now. Yeah, that was filthy. No, I'm going to run a tape past that. That will just do more damage than good. That's why I get a cassette and play some stuff over it. I don't get my um, no copyright sounds tape. Didn't record this tape too well, did I? Sounds better than that. That's just the way I record that tape. The speed's right. Yeah, this tape wasn't recorded too well, was it? But it's only a test tape.
That's good. Look at the spin on that ruddy pin trawler. <laughs> Did I even stop that? It's still going. Yeah, it must have got stuck on. Huh. I didn't realise that. The magic out it doesn't pop up properly. It's been that long since it was used, but the head and the pin trawler are in very good condition, so this cassette mechanism has not had much use at all. I'll get some other tapes so I can play on this and do a little bit of a test. It sounds very good though. Quite a good speaker. Anyway, I'll get this thing a bit of um, a good clean up now. Polish it up and get it looking good. I'll have to replace this switch another time. That's um, part of the switch itself, that little rocker there. The other ones, are, they've got smaller bloody generic rockers on them. This lever's part of that switch. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.